Hi, my name is Roy Pugh. I'm a native of Dunbar and also a resident. Today you're going to be taken through a short tour of the town with all its many attractions. It may come as no surprise that John Muir, father of conservation of the environment, was until recent years completely unknown in his birthplace of Dunbar. Apart from a discerning few who are familiar with the famous quotation about a prophet being unknown in his own country, even after his death on 24th December 1914 in California, USA, where he was honoured during his lifetime, Muir was unheard of in Dunbar and remained so until the 1960s. Muir's message to the world was to protect and preserve the environment or else the survival of the human race would be in peril. John Muir was born in Dunbar on 21st April 1838. He and his family emigrated to America in 1849, where in Wisconsin he completed his formal education and began his lifelong schooling in the wider world. He started his mission work in the picturesque Yosemite Valley, California, which led to the foundation of the American National Park System. Nothing was known of Muir in Dunbar, not even on the centenary of his birth in 1938. The council was contacted by a Kenneth Selby of Seattle Public Schools, where students were working on a project on John Muir's life and achievements. Mr Selby asked if there were photographs of the house where he was born, the school he attended and so forth. The council responded by informing Selby that Muir's house had been demolished and his school was no longer recognisable. So much for conservation. Now we must fast forward to the 1960s, when in September 1965, the American consul in Edinburgh opened a John Muir exhibition in Dunbar's Corn Exchange. It was the first time most Dunbar had heard of their famous son. Then, in 1967, Muir's first biographers, the American Bill and Mamie Kimes came to Dunbar to seek information about Muir's early years and where he had been born. The Lady Provost of the day searched frantically for any book on John Muir in the library service. There was nothing. Nor was there any book in the National Library of Scotland. This state of affairs was soon rectified and it was ascertained that Muir had been born in number 128 High Street or nearby. This was acknowledged by fixing a plaque to the wall inscribed as follows. John Muir, American Naturalist, 1838-1914. to This was ambiguous and to some insulting. However, in the country of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, as most bureaucrats usually are. Be that as it may, in 1981 Muir's birthplace at numbers 126 to 128 was converted into a small museum. Well, the top floor, consisting of three rooms, was open to the public. It contained practically nothing belonging to the Muir family, other than a sampler his mother Anne had made. The rest of the artefacts were not even contemporary. It was to say the least pretty amateurish. No matter, as Muir himself would have said, great oaks out of little acorns grow. It was a start. Then, in 1993, Dunbar Town House was opened as a museum where intending visitors could obtain the key to number 128 and let themselves in to view the Muir Shrine. Pressure was exerted in East Lothian Council for a proper museum 
or interpretive centre dedicated to Muir's life and works. Responding, East Lothian Council proposed to establish a John Muir Environmental Centre in the John Muir Country Park. This was resisted by the Dunbar John Muir Association, founded in 1994, to challenge this thoughtless proposal. A basic fact which escaped the Council, planners, that the centre should be sited where it wouldn't pose a threat to wildlife. The Association won their argument to site the centre in Dunbar High Street, which was eminently sensible. In about 2001, work began on the refurbishment of numbers 126 and 128 High Street, despite some opposition to the removal of the museum rooms on the top floor of number 128. John Muir's legacy was continuing. He had been a source of controversy in his adopted country, the USA, and now he was ruffling feathers in his own hometown, which he left as a boy. Before that, in 1996, a proposal to erect a statue to Muir in Dunbar High Street was opposed by a minority who even took their case to the Secretary of State for Scotland. In the end, sense prevailed. The statue costing £26,000 by the Ukrainian sculptor Valentin Znoba was unveiled by Magnus Magnusson, the famous author and presenter of the popular TV quiz show Mastermind on 3rd October 1997. Work proceeded on the John Muir birthplace which finally opened its doors to the public in August 2003. Since then, the Interpretive Centre has gone from strength to strength, attracting visitors from all over the world. John Muir's message is as valid today as it was in his own time. A simple man, Muir was far-seeing not only in preserving sites of natural beauty and scientific significance, he also knew his writings would live, live on after him. He famously wrote that, A man in his books may be said to walk the earth long after he is gone. And now we come to the end of this documentary with a visit to the John Muir Way, which will be declared open by the First Minister of the Scottish Parliament, Mr. Alex Salmond on 21st April this year. <laughs>